Lord. God is good. Welcome, Athanans. God bless you. We love you with the love of Jesus. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. All the saints said? All the expectant brothers and sisters said? Anyone will say no, man? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, um, <laughs> God is good. I was uh, waiting on the Lord and uh, you see, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's good to be an evangelist because I can take the five sermons, all right, and travel the nations and preach the same sermons in five different cities. Are you with me? It's very easy to be an evangelist. But to be a pastor, it takes a challenge. You know why? Because I have to make sure that I give you a freshly baked manna from heaven. Praise the Lord. I cannot repeat, even when I go back browsing into my a whole load of sermons, you know, um, I have to still seek God's face. And I say, God, this I preached last year. I say, yes, I know that, but I'm not going to tell you to preach the same word that you preached last year. You have to give something fresh to my people. Amen. Are we ready for fresh food? Fresh manna from heaven? In the name of Jesus, come on. Are you excited? So the Lord says, why don't you teach my people to enjoy the land of Canaan that I have given to them? And I said, Lord, there's too much of prosperity and everyone is targeting against prosperity. And I, you're telling me that I will tell the church again, enjoy the land of Canaan. He said, yes, sir. When he said, yes, sir, to me, I got a shock. Let me tell you that. I got a shock. I got a goosebump. And I said, Lord, please, you know, I'm your humble servant. He said, you're my son. And I said, Lord, I thank you very much. But you know, the, the great respect that he has for his servants, the great respect that he has for his children is outstanding, is unfathomable. It cannot be comprehended in our finite thinking because he values us so dearly values us so beautifully because he wants to tell you that he has loved you with an everlasting love. His loving kindness and tender mercies shall not depart from you. Even the mountains will depart, but my loving kindness shall never depart from you, says the Lord. That's what he's saying. And I said, God, 2017 had been a good year for the church, but nevertheless, there were many people who were suffering with uh, joblessness situations and and visa cancellations and struggles on finances. He said that period is over. I repeat. He said that period is over. The, from the, this year, September onwards, you have entered into your year of Jubilee. And that's what God was telling me. And he reminded me again the December 6th when President Donald Trump made an announcement. All right on the television to the whole world that Jerusalem is an eternal capital of Israel. Come on, he's just stating what the Holy Bible says. That it is the eternal capital of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll come and rule and reign the whole globe from the center of the earth, from the Jerusalem that is the city of our Lord, the city of our God, and it is belonging to Yeshua the Messiah, and it belongs to his people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Every jubilee, something must be returned back. Something more must be added to the body of Christ. Something more must be restored back to the body of Christ. And this time in the physical realm, all Jerusalem was declared as capital. They don't like it because Zion will become a cup of reeling and thunder and trembling. Jerusalem will become a, a cup of trembling to the nations all around. And that's what is happening right now. These are prophetic times that we are living in church. Amen. These are great times that we are living in. And we are the people of the Lord that will pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Come on. Hallelujah. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are not political people, but we are kingdom people. I said something. We are not political people. I don't bother much about the politics of the world, but I do bother about the kingdom of heaven that must come down and reign and establish its rule upon this land, upon this nation, and upon this world in the mighty name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So this is a year of Jubilee. And because this is a year of Jubilee, everything that you have lost must be restored back. Everything that has been stolen must be given back. Every man who has lost his possession must return back to his possession in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's what God is calling. That come on, lay hold of your destiny. Yes, persecution is happening. Yes, blood is flowing in the Middle East, but the Holy Ghost is also flowing in the Middle East. Hallelujah. There are great ramifications that are happening in the spiritual realm. There is a great shift that has already occurred in the spiritual realm, and we, the church, are going to enjoy every blessing of that shift that has already occurred, and we have been positioned, and we have been placed to take hold of our destiny with both hands uh, that we will run with the vision that God has given us and do what the Lord has called us to do. And so I'm excited. You know why I'm excited? Because all the time we are entering a new season. We are entering a new time. We are entering into a new era. We are entering into a new dimension of God's glory. We are entering into a new dimension of God's love. His God's glory and God's power will be greatly manifested in our midst in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So get ready for that greater manifestation. Even when you come together to pray for these five days of fasting and praying, I'm telling you, five is a number of grace uh, and you will see the manifold uh, manifestation of the grace of Yeshua, of his manifested presence uh, will glorify in your midst, uh, will be magnified in your midst uh, and you will see the glory of Yeshua in your lives. Every disease must go. And everything that has been stolen must be returned back in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. You must, every believer should shout out, hallelujah. 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 Say, I receive my destiny. Come on, say, I receive my destiny. I receive my goal. I receive everything that God has got in store for my life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I get excited because there are greater things in store for my life. There are greater things in store for Amazing Grace Church. There is greater things for, in store for the church worldwide, for the holy remnant of Jesus that watches this message through the YouTube and through the internet. They will know that 2018 will be a greater year of God's glory that will be manifested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So do you want to be a stalwart of faith? Do you? <clears throat> Come on. Do you want to be a stalwart of faith? I was waiting on the Lord. And God was painting a picture. I told you about the picture when I got a picture right here. Been sitting right here in the front last week. And I gave you a picture of a milk. Put on fire. Right? So God was giving you a picture. And he gave me a picture. I'm a man of words, but a lot of time God talks to me with pictures too. <coughs> Excuse me. But God is a good God. So he was talking to me through pictures. And he said, son, what happened when Israel came out from Egypt? As a Lord, they were in slavery. Yes, sir. They were in slavery. As a God, what do you mean? He's a son Moses is my man. But Moses could not take my people into the land of Canaan. He orchestrated everything. He had the plan. He had the laws. And he put it down on the paper. Everything. He had the laws. And I buried him. But he did not have the opportunity to take my people into the land of Canaan. But his servant did. Moses, his servant. Joshua, the son of Nun, did. I said, yes, Lord. So what do you imply? He said, there is a, something very important that I want to share with you. He said, look behind to Egypt and see what Egypt was. Egypt was a place of grandeur, but at the same time was a great place of bondage. Grandeur for the people of Egypt, bondage for the people of Israel. Come on. And I like that. 
I said, yes, God, when they came out, right, the yoke of slavery was broken from their lives, from the spirit, from the soul, from their bodies. And when they stepped out from Egypt, they stepped out into the manifested presence of your glory. But wait a minute. When they stepped out from the manifested presence of his glory, when they came out from slavery into the glory of God, what happened? Food was provided. Clothing was provided. Medicine was provided. No need of a doctor. No need of a pharmacy. They were living in a atmosphere where every believer must be able to enjoy the glorious presence of Yeshua the Messiah and enjoy the provision that comes forth in the essence of or of the result of the presence of the Messiah. Are you with me? So from slavery, they stepped on to supernatural. Say slavery to supernatural. Now hold that opinion in your mind. Slavery to supernatural. Supernatural presence of God brought protection and brought provision. Amen. That's what happened. The supernatural presence of God brought protection and provision for the Israelites for 40 years in the wilderness. And I said, yes, Lord. Absolutely right. They did not have to cook. They did not have to need the flour. They didn't have to do anything. Manna was provided. The food of heavens was given to an earthly man. Why? Because of the unconditional love of Yeshua for his people. And I like that. The unconditional love of Yeshua for his people. His love is is humongous. His love is outstanding. His love cannot be actually comprehended with a finite mind. His love has to have, our minds have to have a powerful revelation of the agape love of God so that we can see yet another dimension of his powerful love. You know why? Because he loved us so much, he loves us so much that he wants to make sure that we will come to a place of land of Canaan that flows with milk and honey. But to reach to Canaan, there is something is happening. The shift has taken place because Moses misrepresented God. Instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock. Water still flowed, but he misrepresented God's character. Because the leader Moses, Pastor Moses, misrepresented God's character, what happened? He said, okay, you can see the land of Canaan, but you cannot go into the land of Canaan. Many people have seen the land of Canaan by being born again, but they don't live in the land of Canaan and enjoy the blessings of the land of Canaan. Hello? You have been born again. One day you gave your life to Jesus and you were delivered from your slavery. You came into a place of provision and protection and the manifested presence of God. But that was a one-time occasion. You saw it like Moses, but you could not step in to enjoy the blessings. You could not step in to enjoy the milk that is flowing. You could not step in to enjoy the big, big pomegranates and the big bunch of grapes that God wants to feed you with. Are you with me? You know, when we were growing up, we were given, uh, you know, pictures to paint. Okay, the two spies are bringing the bunch of what? Uh, grapes on a, on a big rod hanging because one guy cannot carry a bunch of grapes from Canaan. Man, I am yet to see that in the real terms. Right? Huge pomegranates. Lovely fruit of the land of Canaan. And God says that land I will give to you. And I have given it to you. But remember, hold this opinion in your mind. From supernatural, from slavery to supernatural. But after supernatural, there is something else has to take place. And that's where I'm going to draw your attention to. Because you've come to a place from slavery to supernatural. 
And a lot of time we are stuck at the supernatural and we don't progress from the supernatural. There is a progression from the supernatural on to where God wants you to be. The leadership shift has happened. The change has taken place. Though the change has taken place, but God wants you to do something very important is, is to engage. Engage into spiritual warfare. I've given you the land. Joshua, wherever your feet will tread on, that land I will give to you. That land has been given to my people, Israel. <clears throat> so what do you have to do? You must work to take it has been given, but you must work and engage in spiritual warfare so that you will destroy the Anakims and the giants that are occupying your territory of blessing. Hallelujah. We are so supernaturally linked that we want to all the time have the goosebumps of the Holy Spirit. We want to have ooh and ah and ooh and ah and tears and all that stuff. Are you with me? And we feel happy about it, thinking, oh, the presence of God has come and something is happening. I have felt something. It's all feeling-based. Are you with me? That feeling-based Christianity is only the first level of Christianity. I repeat that. Feeling-based Christianity is the first level of Christianity. You must progress on and take the weapons of warfare and get engaged into the spiritual warfare that God has called you in. Are you with me? So God is saying, you have been delivered from slavery, brought into the supernatural, but then progress on to the spiritual warfare that under Joshua's leadership, you must destroy every king and every Anakim and every giant that stands against you to stop your blessing. Hello? Your Canaan is still occupied by the Anakims. Your Canaan is still occupied by the 31 kings that Joshua had destroyed at his time and possessed the land right up to river Euphrates. Are you with me? That's what is happening. Your blessing is there. Your provision is there. The land flows with milk and honey, but the Anakims are enjoying the blessing instead of you to possess it and to receive it. So I'm going to focus your attention from the supernatural to the spiritual warfare. And then the next aspect of that would be that you progress from the spiritual warfare to a place where you will come to possess your spiritual and physical blessings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 9. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise across this, across this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them. Present continuous tense. I am giving to them. I have given to them. King James said, I have given to them. So in God's eyes, God has given you the inheritance. But in his eyes, he wants to put your faith into action so that you will be able to possess and receive everything that God has in store. So it says here in verse 3, Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. Remind the people who are fighting for the land, more will be added to Israel. Because this is the territory that Joshua possessed at that time, 4,000 years ago, even before anyone came to think about that today Jerusalem will be declared as a capital. Hallelujah. And so what is happening here? Okay, so he had possessed the land toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. See the territory? You cannot see it with your eyes, physical eyes. 
Your territory you must see with your spiritual eyes opened by the power of the Holy Ghost to see where Euphrates is. You cannot see from Jerusalem where Euphrates is. But God is saying, tell Euphrates that is close to Iraq. That land belongs to you. I have given it. Hello? Praise the Lord. And then he says, And as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory, no man. I like that. Say no man. Come on, say no man. No man. Who's saying that? God is saying, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Do you believe that? If you believe that, shout it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No man. Come on. That's why I said no demon of hell and no power of man can ever come against the anointed people of God. You are the chosen people. You are the anointed people. You are handcrafted. You are hand selected. Hand carved people of God. Tattooed here in the lines of Jehovah God. The names of the church of Jesus. The remnant of Jesus. Your name is in his palm. And your face is in his palm of his hand. He knows you by your name. No man. No man. Come on. Can stand against you. Do you have enemies? I do. But they can't stand against me. Neither can they stand against you. Do you believe that? If you have enemies, every enemy must run today. Hello, if you have enemies, they must be scattered from seven different directions by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the breath of his mouth. You will speak and they will run in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's your destiny. When God says no man, I believe what he says. I'm convicted what he says and I put into action what he says. There is no lashing and lacking tongue will ever rise against the people of God. Hallelujah. So he says, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not, come on say it, I will not fail you or come on say it I will not I'm not saying Jesus is saying God is saying I will not fail you nor will I forsake you I am not forgotten I am not forgotten I am not forgotten wow he knows your name sing it out I'm not forgotten if you have ever thought that you were forgotten that's lie of Satan. That's the lie of people who you hang around with. Because they have influenced your mind to believe in what the devil speaks about you and not what God speaks about you. Because God says, I will not forsake you and I will not forget you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When he says, I believe it. When he says, I'm convinced about it. When what he says, I say it. And that is where the miracle is. Then he says, be strong. Say, be strong. Come on, say, be strong. Come on, show some action. Be strong. Come on. Sashi, you have to lift up Karen. Come on, be strong. Hallelujah. Be strong. And courageous. Wow. God is saying, what God is saying, when you see those giants, when you see those men and the kings and you see their artillery of warfare, you will be strong and you will be courageous because that land and the kings and the demons and the demonic hordes I have given into you and you will make them a spoil in Jesus' name. That's what he's saying. Don't you ever think that word was only for Joshua. That word is for you and me. We are the Joshuas. Hallelujah. We are the Daniels. We are the Samuels. We are the Davids. Hallelujah. We are the Abrahams of today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he says, be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. 
Do what? Strengthen yourself. Fortify your mind that no man can come against you. No man, king or prince or princess, the governments, nobody can come against you because no one, as I was with Moses, as I was with Musa, I will be with you till the end of your age, till the end of your days, I will be with you. Don't you think that Jesus said the same thing? Go unto all the nations preaching my gospel, teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Lo and behold, I will be with you till the end of this age. Don't you think it's the same Jesus of Joshua than the Jesus of Samuel and the Jesus of Daniel and the Jesus of Chris and the Jesus of Samuel and the Jesus of Athanansa is saying to you, I will never leave you, neither will I forget you. Same words. Same Jehovah. Same Yahweh. Same Yeshua. Speaking the words to you today. That's what he's saying. Then he says only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. We are success craving generation. Everyone desires success. No one likes to fail. Anyone likes to fail? No. <laughs> no one likes to fail. Everyone likes to succeed. It is an innate inbuilt in your system. God has put the desire into your spirit to succeed. That willpower to succeed. The willpower to live, to survive. Amen. You cooperate with the life-giving God. You don't cooperate with the demon of death and Hades who tries to come and rob you and kill you and steal from you and destroy you. You cooperate with the life-giving God. And so he says further on, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Uh-huh. The secret of success. He first says, be strong and courageous. And then he says, the book of this law must not depart from where? From where? It should not be in Pastor Samuel's mouth. Every believer's mouth. Every brother, every sister, small totos, small children, they all must have the word of God in their mouth. Teach them the word. Amen. So he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then, condition, if then else, for then will you have what will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. King James Version says, you will have good success. Not ordinary success. Come on. Say good success. Someone say good success. Who's saying? God is saying. Amen. And then he says further down. Again he reminds you. Have I not commanded you? God is questioning. Have I not commanded you? Say commanded me. Be strong. And courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I think I should, I should close the meeting now. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Man, it excites me. I don't have to go anywhere in the world. I have to go and cling to the foot of the cross, cling to the throne room of God and say, Jehovah God, Yahweh God, I love you with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my soul, with all my might, and I will love my neighbor as you have commanded me. Why? Because you are the very source of success. And you are not only the source of success. You are the source of good success. Because your word says in James 1.17. Every good and every perfect gift. Comes forth from the father of lights in heaven. Where there is no 
variableness, nor shadow of death, nor shadow of turning. That means there are no shadows. Here you see shadows from the light. But in God's light, he's all dimensional. Your shadows are swallowed up. Shadows are swallowed up. You live in an ultra glory of Yeshua the Messiah. The ultra light of Yeshua the Messiah. It is so powerful light that there are no shadows of you. Even the shadows shy away from the glorious presence of Yeshua. Do you think that the shadows of the past are following you? Witchcraft is following you. Voodoo is following you. Your father's curse has come upon you. That's the lie. If you are a born again believer, washed and redeemed by the blood of the lamb, operating in accordance to God's word, every generational curse has been destroyed. Every shadow of the past have been swallowed because now you have become the child of the most high God, the child of light and the light is inside of you and it magnifies the aura and the glory of Yeshua in you and through you. Amen? Hallelujah. Wow. The other side of Jordan was death, disease, curse. The other side of Jordan was pain and suffering. But now, they, just across the Jordan, there is victory. Just across the Jordan, there is power. Just across the Jordan, the land is flowing with milk and honey. I can see from this side of the Jordan, there, but I need to enter. I need to go and possess it. And that's what God is saying. It is an amazing picture. You know, whenever you see that picture, you will see and you will take into account that it requires great faith on the part of the believer to cross the river. Great faith. Amen. We always say, Pastor, I can see the land of Canaan, but let me give half time. I will build a boat in Jadav and I will hire a company and then I will cross the river. How many boats would two million people require? Is a question. There wouldn't be enough setter supply. There wouldn't be enough carpenters. They may not have the technological know-how. But when God says, I will give you and I will make you cross over, he has got a very divine formula that is beyond our common thinking. His formulas are very distinctly different from the formulas and the methodologies of the world. Distinctly different. And the faith came into an engagement. Faith was there. They heard the word. But now they have to engage the faith. Now they have to make their faith work. Now they have to take the command of Yeshua seriously and get into the waters. But there is a process of getting into the waters. When you hear the commander in chief giving you a command. Hey come on the Levites prepare yourself on this and this day. You will carry the ark of the covenant and you will take the ark of the covenant. And the moment you will step into the rivers of water. What is going to happen? Some powerful thing is going to happen. The way I did it with Moses at the time when he struck the rod on the Red Sea, it parted and it started like a wall and stood like a wall with a dry ground. I'm going to repeat the miracle, but the method will be different. With Moses, it was the rod. With Joshua, it was the people. The Levites, the priests, you and me. Who have prepared themselves to carry the covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. Come on. The Ark of the Covenant is carried on your shoulders. Hallelujah. At that time in the supernatural. Your rod of authority worked through the servant of God. But now there is a shift that has taken place. It is not the servant Joshua with the rod of authority. But servant Joshua's command given to the congregation. Prepare yourself. Carry the ark of the covenant. Step into the water and the water will part. There is a shift. There is a shift. In the spiritual and also in the command. The shift is being from the leadership to 
a shared leadership. From one man leadership to a shared leadership of the congregation. That is why I say all of you are leaders. Come on. All of you are leaders. Say I am a leader. God is expecting me to be holy. God is expecting me to be prepared. God is expecting me to have the manna. God is expecting me to have the Torah into my heart and into my mouth. And I will be ready. So at the command of the Lord, I will step into the water. I don't know what's going to happen, but something is going to happen. Because I've engaged my faith. Hallelujah. I've engaged my faith and when I engage my faith some miracle is bound to happen because you have put your faith to work and when your faith is working powerful manifestation is going to take place you don't do anything he does everything that's the powerful thing of faith you don't do anything he does everything stop working in your stead Start, stop making boats to cross Jordan. Stop making canoes to cross Jordan. Wait on the Lord for his instruction. Prepare yourself to carry the Ark of the Covenant on your shoulders. Be holy and have the word. Be holy and have the Ark of the Covenant. You are the carriers of the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost upon you and inside of you. That wherever you go, miracles are bound to happen. Don't wait for some miracle crusade to take place. Don't wait for some big guy to come in and to give you some, give, give some goosebump story to you to satisfy and to please your emotions. No! You are the miracle working Levites whom God has chosen you that the river Jordan must part at the stepping in into the water so that you will see the miracle of God. You will cross the dry land and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, always remember, God is expecting and anticipating that He wants you to get engaged with God. You are betrothed to God. You are the bride that is getting ready to be married to Yeshua's son. We are the bride of Jesus. And he wants you to engage. He wants you to communicate. He wants you to talk. He wants you to, come on, learn the art of warfare. He wants you to go and possess the land that God is giving you. That is why it is required your the faith must be put into action. What is the definition of faith? In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, what does it say? Yeah, you guys are good. You know those scriptures. But see what it says there. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. Abba God, I don't see you fret this river from here, but I believe you. I don't see my land of Canaan, but I believe you. I believe in the now for me to possess at the latter days. Or in a later date where God has established. Come on, that's what it is. That's what the faith means. Faith is saying, now faith is. In Life Christian University, we have been taught that faith is an achiever and hope is a waiter. And I'm talking a success story here. I'm not talking a waiting story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now faith is. That is in the nows. The moment you step into the river. Something should happen. Amen. The moment you step into the river, something must happen because you have obeyed the command of Joshua. And that's what is going to happen with you. Because you are believing for a greater work to take place in your spirit, your soul and your body. You are preparing yourself that in the year of 2018 you will step into the land of Canaan and you will start enjoying your blessing in the name of Jesus. It's not only the supernatural. But we'll move on. Verse 2 says, For by it men of old gained approval. Men of old, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, Jephthah, Daniel. Come on, name it. Deborah. Men and women of old 
they gained approval. Why? Through faith. The just man shall live by faith. All the faithful said amen. So he says, by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. How was the world prepared? Not by Big Bang Theory. The scientists are still trying to discover some Big Bang Theory. If they would bang their heads and get the word in, all the theories will dismantle and they will start believing and knowing that it's by the power of the word of Jehovah God the whole universe was made. Not by some scientific methodology. He's the creator. He's the powerful one. Hallelujah. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Everything that you see is made out of invisible things. So what brings the invisible blessings to the visible, tangible area of your domain? It's faith. It's faith. Faith is the bridge that connects you from the invisible things and transports every blessing into the earthly visible domain of man for him and her to enjoy. That's what God does. Amen. Note what God told Moses. Hmm? God told Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 11 to 16. For this commandment which I command. Moses is a great example of faith. Do you believe that? We say Abraham is a father of faith. And you know he was a friend of God. Moses was very close to God's heart. Very very close. The meekest man ever walked on earth. He was the type of Christ in the Old Testament. Meekest man. Most humble man ever. So he says to Moses. For this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you, nor is it out of reach. Faith is not out of reach. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us to get it for us and make us hear it, that we may observe it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea for us to get it for us, that make us hear it, that we may observe it. But the word is very near you. That's the word of God. But the word is very near you. Where it is, it's in your mouth and it is in your heart that you may observe it. Then he also gives a caution. I've, I've highlighted there. Verse 15. See, I have said before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Only two people want that. The rest want what? Nothing. There's no purgatory, you know. It's not nail. Asman sit up ke khajur pilat ke. That means you fell from heaven and got stuck in the dead palm tree. No, no. Either you're this side or you're that side. There is no in between. There's no purgatory. That your soul will go there and rest for some time. Somebody will pray and then will be transferred to heaven or hell. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. See, I have said before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity. Note what God said for this commandment which I command you today is not too difficult for you nor is it out of reach. Faith was never intended to be difficult. You need to have childlike faith. Daddy has come. Oh man, he runs, runs, runs. And does what? Daddy, 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 pick me up. With a little pamper running on the bottom. Right? He runs, runs. Small baby. The baby like faith. He only sees daddy is happy. He's not looking what he's carrying in the bag. He wants daddy. Do you want daddy today? Do you want your daddy in heaven today for you? We get excited like a childlike faith. 
and say, God, I will come running into your presence and worship and praise the God. I'll give it all unto you. I will jump and cling onto your bosom and I'll give you an embrace. All these things will follow. What do the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. You don't have to work for it. Hello? You don't have to work for it. It will be added to you. Do you want blessings to be added to you? Or you want to work for it? Ami has provided everything to you. All provision. All blessings, barracks to sleep in, guns to fight with, tanks to fight with, everything is provided. But then you are the soldier in the army of God. You must fight. You cannot let that fight die from your system. I repeat, don't let the fight for your faith die in your spirit. Become a mighty militant for Yeshua. I repeat, become a militant for Yeshua. And I talk a spiritual militant who will not take anything thrown at you. You will stamp that ugly head of Satan under your feet in the name of Jesus. Every scorpion is destroyed. Every disease is destroyed. Every lack is gone. Your marriage is safe. Your future is safe. Your finances are safe. No power of man and no power of hell must come close to you. Because you are a fighter. Come on, I repeat. You are what? A fighter. You are a warrior. You are a soldier in the army of God. Under Joshua's command, it was changed. Initial two miracles after that warfare. What was the miracle? Corporate engagement of faith with the priest stepping into the water. Jordan parting its way and they stood in the middle of the dry ground till all Israel passed over wow come on priests you want your families to pass over come on you want your marriage to pass over come on you want your finances to pass over come on you want your future to pass over come on you want to see victory of God to come upon you in bounds and folds of glory of God it's time that we start engaging Hallelujah. Miracle will happen once. Miracle will happen twice. And miracle may happen whilst you are in the fight. But you must fight. You must fight. Say, I will fight. I will fight my war. I will fight my battle. I will overcome Satan. I will overcome the lust of the flesh. I will overcome the lust of my eyes. I will overcome the pride of life. And I will destroy and tear down the strongholds of Satan in Jesus name. And I will pass over. I will cross over to my land of destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? So faith was never intended to be difficult nor out of reach for those that seek it. No, faith is to be found in one's heart and to be set in motion by man's mouth. Amen. What did Jesus say? Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 12, 34 to 37. For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Jesus said, the good man brings out of his good treasure what is good and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an profit and loss account. P&L account. Before you make the balance sheet, you do a P&L account. All the accountants said amen. Profit and loss account. So what Jesus is saying, he says, but I tell you that every careless word that people speak, that they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be, say words, say words. Hello, say words. Mm -mm. Words. 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 You know, pastor, there's flu going on in the 
Dubai. I was sick for last week. I caught the flu. You talked about the flu, you caught the flu. You talk about health, you'll be healthy. Yeah. I'm not saying Jesus said. By the power of your words, you define your destiny. By the power of your words, you hold your marriage together. By the power of your words, you hold your sons and your children together. By the power of your words, your finances are held together. By the power of your words, your future is held together. By the power of your words, heaven will be held together for you. Hallelujah. So let's communicate the word of God from our mouth. Don't say there is flu outside, I'll catch the flu. You will catch the flu. Oh, many people are dying in accidents, you know. Say, oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You're praying the blood of Jesus out of fear, not out of faith. It doesn't work. Are you with me? But when you say, Lord, I'm a child of God and I thank you for your angels who guard me whilst I'm driving into the fast roads of Dubai. People around me may die, but I will live and declare of the glory of the living God. It doesn't matter that what hurt comes to me, but it matters that what the blessing and the health that God has promised me from his word, I will receive it, I will declare it, I will eat it, and I will live by it because Lord, that's my heritage. Come on. That's my inheritance. In an act of faith, Joshua spoke the word. He commanded the Lord to the priests and the priests acted on the word. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 6, he says, and Joshua spoke to the priests saying, take up the ark of the covenant, cross over ahead of the people. So they took up the ark of the covenant and went ahead of the people. Joshua 3, 14 to 17. So when the people set out from the tents to cross the Jordan with the priests, carrying the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and when those who carried the Ark came into Jordan, and the feet of the priests carrying the Ark were dipped in the edge of the water, for Jordan overflows all its banks all the days of harvest. The waters which were flowing down from above stood and rose up in one heap, a great distance away at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathon, those which were flowing down toward the Sea of Araba, the Salt Sea, were completely cut off. So the people crossed opposite Jericho and the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel crossed on dry ground until all the nation had finished crossing the Jordan. It's time that you'll cross the Jordan. Hello? Hello? Supernatural is taking place in the Jordan. But then after that, warfare. Warfare. You have to be sticking closer to God to receive how to pull the walls of Jericho down. Hear, obey. Even your children will not make noise. Come on. A lot of you parents let your children lose in the church. No, no, no. no. The children will not make noise when you're circling the wall of Jericho. No sawing sound should come. Only one trumpet blow. One sound, one round. On the seventh day, seven rounds, trumpet, and then all will shout, including your totos, your small babies. That means God's supernatural power came upon the babies. No one pooed, no one peed, and no one cried. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No sound. Why? The enemy does not have to hear the sound of silence because God is moving in your silent time. And he is ramshackling and shaking the foundations of Jericho that at the last blast, something so powerful will happen that the walls of Jericho will not become a heap, but the walls of Jericho will be swallowed and will become an even ground. That's why I like that scripture of the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 and 3. What does it say? I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. But it is again God's word. I will go before thee. I'm not saying God is saying for you. So you must believe that. Hallelujah. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in paces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron and I will give thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of... Come on, shout it out. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering. He deserves it. I will go before you. I will level the mountain for you. 
I will raise up the valley for you. I will cut the gates of iron for you. I will cut the gates of bronze for you. I am a way maker. That's what God is saying. I am your way maker. Don't look to the arm of the flesh or to the arm of the devil. Look to me and I will make ways for you. And I will go before you and I will settle you. And I'm not going to settle you with some copper and brass. I will give you the riches and the treasures that are stored in the deep places and hidden places of the earth. That's what God is saying. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Was that the final act of faith required for Israel? No. That's just the beginning. Supernatural is just the beginning. Because when we step on, we engage into spiritual warfare. And after destroying 31 kings, I don't have time to take you to the scriptures. After destroying 31 kings, did Israel have peace and they possessed the land as given by God under the leadership of Joshua. Hallelujah. But what were they doing? Fighting. 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 Corporate warfare. If we have fasting and prayer five days a week, is corporate warfare. Don't say, Pastor, you pray for me and I will take some rest at home. No, sir. It's corporate warfare. Why? Because Israel was engaged in corporate warfare. I remind you the times of Achan. When Achan sinned, one man sin caused a defeat for the whole of Israel. One man sin. One man's uncooperation. One man's rebellion. One man's disobedience. When the corporate anointing flows, then one man cannot sit idle. Everyone must be engaged and everyone must go as an army of God, possessing the land, possessing those hidden treasures that God has given. There is no vacation for some and some laboring for you. No, sir, it is you and I. We labor together as the priests of God. We fight together. We destroy the kings together till all 31 kings are destroyed. And you take over that. And then you don't let that land given over to anybody. Apostle Paul reiterates God's statement in Deuteronomy 30, 14. In Romans 10, 8 to 11. He says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. That means you must speak. The church must speak at an appointed time. You must speak. You must shout. You must raise your voice. Hallelujah. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is Lord over all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be... We must progress from the supernatural presence and the providence and protection to enter into the realm of spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. That's what God is calling us. God told Joshua, wherever your feet will tread on, the land I will give to you. You must possess it. When we understand spiritual warfare and are well trained in tearing down the strongholds of the enemy of our soul and taking down the giants that stand before you and possessing your land, you must tear it down in your coconut. This is where your battleground is. You must crown it with loving kindness and tender mercies and tear down every opinion and every tradition and every thought that is ungodly. Tear it down in Jesus' name. Believe it. Be convinced and convicted that you will live 120 healthy and strong. Only few shouts. Many still are not convinced. That you live 120. That's what the Bible says. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what God is saying. Salvation is not to be difficult. It only requires what we receive. Believe and confess. For with the heart a person believes. Resulting in righteousness. With the mouth he confesses. Resulting in salvation. So my dear brothers and sisters. After you have fought a spiritual warfare. 
destroyed the Anakims who are possessing your land of Canaan and the giants. Then you take over and you eat the fruit of your hard labor. Hallelujah. You, your wives, your children, your children's children and the great legacy will continue to rule and reign in the land of Canaan. Canaan is for the people of Israel. You are the spiritual Israel because you are the seed of Abraham and you are implanted into that root, into that, so if the root is holy, you will be holy. Our Jesus is holy, you are holy. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants you to know. Amen. Let's all rise in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. In conclusion, faith helps us move from slavery to supernatural presence, provision, and protection of God. The same faith strengthens you for spiritual warfare and ultimately helps you to possess spiritual and physical inheritance. I have given you health. I have given you wealth. I have given you victory. I have given you protection. I have given you preservation. I have given you deliverance. It is all yours. If you believe it, receive it. That's what God is saying. And that is in the nows. That's what God is asking. Hallelujah. The Lord wants you to enjoy the land that flows with milk and honey. And my question to you is, are you enjoying Canaan in your life? Canaan is to be enjoyed here, not in heaven. Canaan is to be enjoyed here, not in heaven. Heaven, there'll be no tears, no pain, no sorrow, no sickness. The land of Canaan for Israel is to enjoy in the nows. Hallelujah. That you must believe that health is your birthright. You must believe that wealth is your birthright. You must believe that you are protected divinely by God. You must believe that you are safe and preserved. You must believe that you will walk in victory because you are the son and the child of God. You are more than conquerors and more than victorious people. Hallelujah. Let's start praying. Come on, start receiving. Thank you. Come on, everybody, everybody, open your mouth, open your mouth and thank the Lord. Say, I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive my blessings of the land of Canaan upon my life, O oh Lord. I receive, O oh Lord, my inheritance. O oh Lord, now, O oh Lord, I'm not only a babe who's having milk, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, but I know that I'm a meat-eating uh, child of God. And Lord, I know how to exercise my senses. O oh Lord, and I know how to fight my battle. O oh Lord, I know how to tear down the strongholds of Satan and enjoy my blessing that is in store for my life in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, everybody, start praying, start praying. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Start praying in tongues. Receive, 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 receive in the name of Jesus. Your healing right now, receive in Jesus' name. Your wealth you receive right now in Jesus' name. If you're jobless even today, right now, God is opening a door for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have prayed. You have prayed for a spouse. God has given you a spouse. You are going to get married soon. You have prayed for children. God is opening your wombs. Receive in the name of Jesus. You have prayed for a business deal. God is opening those doors. Favor is coming upon you. Favor, favor. You are a child of favor. Say, I'm a child of favor. I am favor. Say I'm favor. I attract favor. I'm, I, I'm, 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 wherever I go, oh, God will go before me. He's my way maker. He's my way maker. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my redeemer. He's my restorer. He's my everything. Come on, everybody, everybody, everybody. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Receive, receive, receive. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. If you're sick in your body, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, if there is grief in your heart, receive joy in Jesus' name. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. We joy in the Lord. We rejoice in the Lord because He is our God. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our everything. He is my way maker. He goes before me. He levels mountains for me. He raises the valleys for me. Creates an even path for me to walk on. 
cut the gates of iron and bronze for me and gives me the hidden treasures of darkness and the riches that are stored in secret places. Come on. Your mind has not yet fathomed the riches that God wants to give you. Your mind has not yet imagined the deep diamonds that God wants to give into your hands. You have only looked to what your hand can achieve. You have only looked to the arm strength that from where will I build a boat to cross my Jordan. But God is saying, no, 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 no. You carry my ark, step into the waters. I will part the ways. I will part the waters. It will stand like a heap and you will be standing on a dry ground till all Israel, all Israel has crossed over crossed over it is corporate crossing over from 2017 to 2018 in the name of Jesus it is a corporate crossover for the amazing grace church and everybody who listens uh, to this word uh, on the internet uh, there is a crossover from 2017 to 2018 uh, with vigor with vitality with health with strength uh, with finances with future with blessings uh, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus receive 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 come on don't stop praying two minutes more two minutes more I'm going to finish it come on receive in Jesus name this word is for you this word is for me this word is for all of us this word is all for, for all of us. Elama shikara la mando, liana ma shekere le mendere kira, rahuna ma sikara la mando, riala ma shekere le 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 le, ruala ma sakara la mando, rokolo lo 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 shere le le le, riala ma sakala mando, rakala la 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 ma she, rokolo lo 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 mo se, riala mendere kere le le, riala ma shoro lo 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 lo, riala ma se. Receive in Jesus' name. Receive your health in Jesus' name. Receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Now. Now. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day of restoration. Today is the day of rejuvenation. Today is the day of rejoicing. Today is the day of revival. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today. Today. You will not go back home sick. You may have come sick. You will go home healed. You may have come broke. You will go home filled with blessings of Yeshua the Messiah. Because he loves you with an everlasting love. Father, we want to say thank you. We want to bless you. We receive your word in faith. Lord, we thank you for the transition that you're giving to us. That as we transition into 2018, Lord, we are prepared with our spiritual warfare, the armory, Oh Lord, ready to war, ready to fight battle, ready to possess a possession. Oh Father, because it's a year of Jubilee and Lord, that every man will return to his possession in the name of Jesus. Every man will return home. The prodigals will return home. The backsliders will return home. The sinners will come back to the cross. Oh Father God, I pray there'll be a great awakening and you will be alone exalted and be glorified. I as your servant bless your church Lord I speak the blessings of salvation to be the portion of your church Lord that every member of the church will be blessed every member will be sealed under the blood of the lamb every guest will be blessed O oh father Lord that every need of theirs will be met by your grace O oh father Lord every sick body will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus every bankruptcy will be gone in the mighty name of Jesus every joblessness situation will turn around in the mighty name of Jesus O oh Lord no business will come to happen big businesses in the name of Jesus O oh God and I pray that you will turn it around for your people in this year in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that the blessings of Jubilee will be the portion of your church in Jesus' name. And you will receive the preeminence and you will receive the glory. We humbly receive your word. We eat your word. We want to get grounded and rooted in your word. 
and I pray that we will not be the same. Bless your church. They will lack no good thing. Their barns will overflow with plenty. Their presses will burst out with new wine. Their cup will run over. Surely before their enemies, you will spread a table for them. Hallelujah, Lord, a dining table. Oh, Lord, with the goodies of heaven, oh, Master, that you will bless them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that you will anoint them, oh God, and the anointing will spill over. It will run and rush like a river. Oh, Father, in these end time days, miracles will happen. Oh, Father, they will take the supernatural in those difficult areas and will cause the Jordan to part, cause the Red Sea to part, and will train the people in spiritual warfare and will train the people in obtaining their spiritual inheritance in the name of Jesus. Possess their spiritual inheritance, their physical inheritance in the name of Jesus, that you will be alone glorified. We thank you, we bless you, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray.